Brookfield may be one of the more complicated companies when it comes to their structure, and as a result, their fundamentals may be a wee bit harder to figure out. Fasten your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a good one. Brookfield Corporation can be seen as the flagship of the Brookfield companies. It focuses on owning and operating high-quality businesses and assets with a long-term focus on generating cash flow. It used to be Brookfield Asset Management before it split into, well, a new Brookfield Asset Management and the current version of Brookfield Corporation. The new Brookfield Asset Management is a subsidiary of Brookfield Corporation, and it serves as the asset manager of the entire Brookfield group. It is kind of thought of as a premium stock. When the old Brookfield Asset Management split into the new Brookfield Asset Management and, of course, Brookfield Corporation, BN took on all of that debt, and that is going to play a big role in their fundamentals for sure. And to make matters even worse, another Brookfield has muddied the situation, though not really, and that is Brookfield Reinsurance. A letter was sent out to the holders of Brookfield Corporation with an offer to exchange up to 40 million shares of BN for shares of Brookfield Reinsurance. Just to be clear, this is not another split, but more of a strategy to shuffle some stocks without issuing new shares. Brookfield has acknowledged that this move is good for them, but it may or may not be good for all shareholders. In fact, if you're holding Brookfield Corporation, you need to determine if it is the right move for you. Join the conversation. Let us know in the comments if you hold BN or BAM, or perhaps even both. Your participation is well appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future content, and a huge thank you for that click. Fundamentals for Brookfield Corporation will be interesting, as really the data from before that December 2022 split really does not reflect 100% on the picture of, well, the current day Brookfield Corporation. That split did stack some of the cards in favor of the new Brookfield Asset Management. So we know going into this deep dive that there are going to be some numbers we are probably not going to really like very much. However, as usual, when it comes to the numbers, we are going to call on the aid of our good old buddy, Mr. Math. We will begin with a little surface data. They have a market cap of $73.32 billion, and their beta is definitely more volatile than the market average. It comes in at 1.62. They have an earnings per share of 0.14, and their price to earnings ratio, holy banana bread, it comes in at 315.14. A huge price to earnings ratio like this is just not usable for comparison, and it may also be an indication that they are struggling in one way or another. In these cases, I like to instead use their price to sales ratio, and that comes in at 0 0.50. The average amongst their peers comes in at 3.50. This is not a bad number, as generally a good price to sales ratio falls between one and two, with the lower being better. So this normally indicates that a company may be undervalued. However, I am not so sure in this case. Just for comparison though, Brookfield Asset Management has a price to sales ratio of 5.50. Now their price to book ratio, it comes in at 1.20. The average amongst their peers is, well, 1.20. Look at that, they hit the average dead on. You don't see that very often. They do have a return on equity pretty low of 1.86%, and that has me a little concerned as well. Even with the surface data, we are beginning to see that there are some issues for this company. Let's peel back another layer and see what the cash is going to tell us. Their revenue comes in at a very healthy $96.63 billion. However, look at these. These earnings are a little low at $150 million. Yikes, that is pretty low compared to their revenue. In their almost first year of operation, their earnings are down negative 6.6%. They did have that split in December, and that may very well be tainting this number a wee bit. I never like to see those earnings falling though. Their profit margin looks a little better at 4.5%. Their free cash flow definitely not looking good. It's in the negative, negative 514 million, and they've got an operating cash flow of 6.68 billion. Let's figure out that fair value. Now their current value is $44.04, and using a discounted cash flow model, we get a fair value of $11.10. Yikes! That means they're overvalued by 296.8%. Holy banana bread, that is pretty low. But with a discounted cash flow model, having falling earnings can really hurt that fair value. So I do, once again, I'll take this one as well with a grain of salt. I think we should dive in a little deeper and take a look at their return situation. They don't have a lot when it comes to dividends. Their yield is actually 0.853%. It is a quarterly dividend paid out in the amount of 7 cents USD per share. Their payout ratio, 
a huge 420%. Now that payout ratio is just a reflection of the current cash situation. If they can turn that around, then that ratio should fall big time. I am only interested in the return data from December 2022, right after that split. So we have a wee bit less to work with. No three year in fact. We do of course have their one year. Now their price, it fell from $49.84 to $44.16. That is a return on investment of negative 12.86%. We factor in a little bit of those dividends and we do get a total return of negative 12.39%. That doesn't look that great. Switching to their year to date, their price actually did rise from $43.33 to $44.16. So that is a return on investment of 1.88%. Total return after we factor in the dividends of 2.36%. The takeaway from these numbers is that Brookfield Corporation is looking a little better on this year. And that makes sense as they did drop quite a bit out of the split gate. We will take that last dive and move on down to their debt situation. They have a total debt of $219.70 billion and their total equity comes in at $155.58 billion. That means their debt to equity ratio that comes in at a high 141.2%. This debt to equity ratio has decreased a wee bit coming down from 153% at the time of the BNBAM split. One thing you do have to take into consideration is that at that split, BN did take on all of the debt with them. And BAM started off with a debt to equity ratio of a nice clean 0%. Since last March, Brookfield Corporation have reduced their total debt by roughly $3 billion. That's not too bad. It's at least a move in the right direction. They do have a little bit of cash and cash equivalents of $12.43 million. Switching to the short term, their assets come in at $53.22 billion and their liabilities come in at $38.03 billion. So that's not too bad. On the long term, their assets come in at $409.92 billion and their liabilities come in at $269.52 billion. That's not too bad either. I would love to see these numbers a little lower, but the proportions are not too bad. The only thing I don't like is that their short-term assets does not cover their long-term liabilities, but what can you say? I was expecting worse. Debt-wise, we know their current cash situation is not covering that debt at all, or the interest on that debt. I do not like to see that at all. The silver lining is that they are moving, of course, in the right direction. And in fact, they will be releasing their next quarterly report within days of this video's drop. So you can check to see if these numbers improved. If you, of course, are thinking of getting in on Brookfield Corporation. So it is time to ask that question. What is my final verdict? These fundamentals are not ideal. And even though Brookfield took the debt on the chin with the split is not an excuse. They are working on it and that is fantastic. This is obviously not a stock for the passive income investor. They really don't have a lot in the dividends department. Short term, there could be some swing plays if that is something you are interested in. However, with the exchange to Brookfield reinsurance happening on November 13th, I would hold off to see if there is an impact on the share price. If a lot of people exchange a lot of shares, that could impact the market cap and the share price could drop. So that is a potential. Long term, this is a stock. This is a company that knows how to succeed and they will get that debt under control and they will increase their profitability. It may take a few years to see the results, but it could be a nice get in while they are low opportunity. You know, our good old friend, buy the dip. Personally, I like BAM better than BN, but that is a decision you need to make on your own. And that is something you will need a whole helping heaping of due diligence before you place any of your hard earned money on the table. Keep the learning going. Watch my video on TSX V stocks linked over there on the left or test YouTube's recommendation skills by checking out the video on the right. Your choice will decide the winner and I will see you in the next video.